Hey, welcome back to my channel. Got a little something here for you. This is a quick hit video on how to solder a single wire onto a flight controller or a VTX or, or whatever you're soldering. You need to solder a wire and you're having a difficult time. It won't, it won't take the solder, uh, the pad, um, won't take the solder or whatever the case may be. It looks like garbage when you're done or something's not working. Um, there's things that are involved in soldering a wire properly, something that's going to last a long time as well. Um, so if you solder something with a bunch of garbage in it, you're going to have a bunch of corrosion. Uh, what do I use and how do I do it? And I'm going to zoom in for you so you can see nice and clearly how, how I do it. Um, and then I'll go a little further explaining of, of why it works. Okay. So things that you're going to need, you're going to need some solder. And these are the two solders that I use. I do, depending if I'm doing something really big, I'll use something like this. Okay, and that's if I'm, you know, putting power cables on a on a large build or something like that. Uh, not very often would I use something like this on on a mini quad, racing quad, freestyle quad, whatever the case would be. And this is for bigger stuff. But keep in mind, the bigger the pad, the bigger the solder, the bigger the tip. Okay, um, I I use this if you can see that. Okay, so you can get a good look at that. And then I also use this solder. All right, so need something to clean. This is what I use, just a, a brass Brillo pad to clean the tip off with. And then I put my soldering iron on a switch. I actually have over here, I have a switch um, and a light bulb. So I never forget my soldering iron is turned on because uh, there's a light bulb that comes on when I turn it on. So we're going to heat this soldering iron up. So I chose to use this soldering iron because I just thought most people would use a soldering iron that didn't cost a fortune and was quality soldering iron. It works great. It heats up fast and, it, and it's fairly accurate. It um, has a dial on it that goes from 200 to 450 degrees Celsius. And that's what I've chose to use on everything that I do. This is a great soldering iron. Um, so I'm going to do my demonstration here with 200 degrees Celsius. I'm going to show you how to clean your tip, how to prep the tip to make sure it's ready to go and why it's important. And then we'll go through each one of these things and then we'll zoom in and actually solder the wire. Okay, so for this demonstration, I'm going to solder a 30 gauge wire onto a flight controller uh, a signal pad. So I'm going to use, you can see here that there's a kind of a sharp tip here and then a little bit more blunt. Now what's with this, what's with the two size tips? Okay. When you're soldering something, you want to solder, uh, the size of your pad. So you see that, let's just, let's flip this over so it's easier to understand. You see that pad there? This tip here is just a little too small. That tip doesn't cover that pad all the way. That tip covers the pad all the way. So you're going to want to use that tip. So it is important to use the tip that's the size of the pad. Okay. So these are brand new tips. Obviously, we don't need to use these right now. Put, put them back away. Now, I have a knife tip. I have a couple other tips I'll show you in a more of a close-up um, that I primarily use for soldering um, FPV quadcopter related stuff. I have rosin paste flux. I have tinning flux. And then I have my two soldering, uh, my two types of solder, and they are flux core. So they have flux in the inside the solder. But I'm going to tell you right now that flux isn't isn't really enough because we don't need a whole lot of solder, so we're we're kind of lacking on flux when it comes to the FPV scene. So you need to have something. So once our uh, 
once our soldering iron is heated up to temperature okay i'm going to remove remove my components away when when i'm in the middle of okay we're going to clean we're going to prep our tip okay so the thing you need is some tinning flux and basically this flux is is nothing more than just uh it has solder in it it's an agent in it okay so it's resin and it has flux and soldering paste in it okay so you can get your tip nice and clean and then you just put a little bit of solder on your tip and then give it a couple dips and then give it a clean and now you can see you can see that tip is just i mean it's pretty nice and clean and this tip is pretty old so keeping that nice and clean the other thing is is moistening the tip so sometimes while you're soldering your your solder joints will start to get dry and that you'll see it'll have like a a crusty look to it it almost rubs it almost looks like this paste here see the edge of this paste right here see how dull that is if your solder looks like that then your solder's not any good it's dry it's dry and it's not it's not flowing correctly so we're just going to grab a little bit of a little bit of that okay now our tip is prepped and cleaned okay and we are ready to solder but let me go ahead and get this set up real quick and i'm going to zoom in and we're going to go ahead and solder this all right so we have a little piece of wire here this is our 30 gauge wire we have our flight controller now don't worry about the flight controller or which one it is just for demonstration purposes i will zoom in closer so you can get a better look but i just want to expose a little bit of that wire okay now did i expose too much we can always shorten that so you're going to want to tin that wire up a little bit okay and i'll take some of this tinning flux and i'll just grab a hold i'll just kind of poke my wire in there and then pull that that's it now that wire is nice and straight and it's ready i'll take my i'll take my solder and i'll just put it up here like that okay now let me zoom in so you can kind of see what i'm doing here all right so we have our 30 gauge wire and we're just going to tin that up now i have the tip of that kind of uh I've, I've drug it through the flux you can kind of see on the end there there's a little bit of paste on the end okay i'm just going to heat that up a little bit okay seeing it melted now i stop and then i'm just going to grab a little bit of this right there on the edge of my soldering iron and i'm just going to rub that right across there right quick okay and then what happens is that's going to tin that wire now when you look when you look at your pad that you're about to solder to look at how much wire there is like you're sticking off the board that's not cool you want your wire to be more like that so we need to trim this wire so that we're only you know half the distance of the radius okay so you have the radius of that of that pad you don't want that much wire sticking out so what we're going to do is we're going to get our we're going to get our trimmers and we're going to trim that now you got to make sure that you know where that trimming went make sure that goes in the trash because you find that between your osd or something later on you're gonna be pretty upset so now we have our our wire trimmed to the correct length for that solder pad okay now let's go ahead and tin this pad i'm going to get my flux paste okay and i'm just going to get a little bit of it and i'm going to put a little just a little bit of coating on that okay i don't want to really drench it or or drown it in flux but we want to make sure that we get a a coating on that and then i'm going to i always make sure that my board is tilted just a little bit so if there's any runoff it runs away from the other components now our tip has been sitting over here look at how dry that is that's terrible we don't want to use that we want to clean it first isn't that better okay make sure you can see what i'm doing here okay now you see you see how that 
solder melted. Here, let me zoom in a little more. See how that solder is melted on there? It's hard to see from the lighting, but you can actually see um, there's a coating. Let me get my knife. Can you see it? It's actually a coating of flux all the way around that ball of solder. Make sure your tip is clean because you don't want to push any goo or yuck in that. You see that dark crusty stuff right there? You don't want that going into your solder joint. So you're just going to touch that solder just, just enough to make it. You see that? Just all you're doing is melting that. Remember, we're not melting steel or glass. Or mountain solder which is a tinning and lead and it's really it's soft it's it, it melts pretty quick at 200 degrees uh, Celsius it melts pretty fast so now we have a ball of solder but it's not truly a ball let me show you why it's not really a ball I know it's a misconception people say all the time on Facebook they say put a ball of solder on there it's not really a ball it's more like a hump okay just a little you can see it's not a big blobbing ball, okay? You're just making a little bit of a hump. All you have to do is create a space for that wire that you're about to solder to go into. So now we're gonna grab our wire and we have it. We have our wire. Um, now what I like to do is before I solder is I like to put a little kink on it. See that kink right there? It's important. Because when you put this on the on the uh, flight controller or the board or whatever you're soldering to, you see how that kink faces down? That's going to give us a little air space underneath. Let's go ahead and solder this wire in. See if I can hold my hand still enough for you to see what I'm doing. We're just going to come in here and we're going to touch the edge of that wire. Okay, that's it. That wire is attached permanently. It you ain't you ain't tearing it off of there. You can if you want flow it a little bit more and smooth it out. There, there it is. Soldered in there as good as it's gonna get. And then I turn my soldering iron off. And then I leave that soldering iron uh, to cool. And before it gets too cool, I put a I put another coating of uh, flux paste on that tip, so it's ready for next time. But see how see how that turned out. See how that's up off the board because of the 90 degree angle we put on it originally. It's not laying flat across the board. There's a little bit of an air gap underneath. And do you notice that the insulation is all the way to the pad itself? We're not running the, you know, the, you're not, you're not dealing with the wire that looks like that. That's, that's garbage. If your wire looks like that, that's not going to fly. That's not going to work because in a crash or any other wire is going to touch that and it's going to be bad. All right. So that's how uh, you solder a wire onto a, onto a component. You can get fancy and really do some some really cool soldering, uh, just about anything using that technique. But you're never going to be able to solder very good without flux. So basically, that's that's how that's how I do it. And this is all the kind of stuff that I need to do that type of work. Now the other tips I'll explain. All right, so here's all the tips that I use. Let's zoom in. So let's say I'm doing an XT60. So I'll use my knife. Okay, that surface area. I need to get that surface area hot. I'll go up to 400 degrees Celsius with this knife to get that XT60 on. And if you're doing, if you're doing repair work, like you have a bind and fly or a ready to fly quad that already has an XT60 on it and you're trying to fix that, you're going to need a, a the surface area of that pad equal and you're going to have to go 400 450 or even more because they use leadless solder 
And that stuff is such a pain to work with. And then for um, like my five inch ESCs, I'll have something like this, or I'll use this one here. See how it has like a, a flat edge to it. So I'll tin the pads with that. And then I'll flow, I'll flow the wiring in with this. And then this is the one that I just used. This one here is the, the one I use the most because it's, it's very, that size of pad is pretty normal. And then sometimes you get some really teeny tiny pads like the RXSR, for example. So if you want to use the RXSR as an example, you have, there's these little pads here for inverted and uninverted signal. You need a really teeny tip to get in there and, and accurately hit that spot. You can do it with a little bit bigger soldering iron, but sometimes you'll cross, you know, you'll bridge something. So having an, uh, an assortment of tips is, is a good choice for a soldering iron to make sure that you can use, you know, a, a larger blade style for, for bigger things and then a smaller tip. But primarily this, this tip here, that's the, I mean, I use this pretty much for almost everything. It's, it's pretty universal. So, so that's that, how I solder a wire and that's how, that's how we work it around here. So yeah, I hope that this uh, quick tip helped you out and I hope that it made your life a little bit easier when it comes to soldering a wire and getting them a little bit more accurate and clean and a little shinier. But if this helped you out, you know, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. If you hated it, man, you give me a thumbs down. It all works. Enjoy the breeze. Thank you.